and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from Central Europe. I hope you're having a fantastic Saturday and a good weekend so far in this class, everyone. We are looking at speaking part three, the most challenging part of the speaking interview, arguably, for some people. Welcome, Sunny. Welcome, Kamal. Nice to see many students joining in on this class. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general version of the exam, check us out at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials to help you. And for today and tomorrow, we still have our Cyber Monday discount going. It's the best discount of the year. The code is Cyber Day, and it will give you a 40% discount on our premium package. I'll quickly show you uh, what I'm talking about because there's lots of speaking practice for you here as well. And, uh, you can practice speaking with other students for free, for absolutely free. So let me just darken up the screen here so you can see this website. This is aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. At the top here, once you register, you can register by clicking the red button. You have a student account. And in your student account, you have a function here. There's lots of materials here, original exams, interactive courses, videos, and there's a student partner speaking uh, where you can find other IELTS students and you can video chat with them. And you can do this for free. So when you click on that, um, you'll find other people. There's always a few people in here uh, looking for someone to practice the speaking section. And of course, there's also questions on this page as well to choose from. So here you have Sharath, you have Harshit, and you have Rina. Uh, who are waiting for somebody to video chat or audio chat. You can text them, say hello, and join up with them, okay? So make sure to do that and use that. It's free. Uh, you have that on the general version as well. In fact, the general and academic version, uh, these uh, speaking parts link together. So this is the general version. You can click that big red button to join our premium package there. And again, you can also use the Cyber Day 40% discount code on the general IELTS channel as well. Of course, there's apps that link with the websites also. So remember to use that speaking. It's free for everyone. Uh, you can use it through the free version of the course as well. So join up and practice your speaking. Hi, Rohit. Hi, Amanjot. Hi, Akash. Nice to see many more students and our regular students coming into the class now also. Uh, you have apps, academic IELTS help app links to aehelp.com, general IELTS help app links to gieltshelp.com. And you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com anytime. I will gladly answer. Okay. Andrew Uskuk, um, it's different accounts for academic and general IELTS, but for the speaking, the uh, websites link together. Okay. All right. Okay, so they're very, yeah, Rajveer, um, of course, sometimes there's issues, but overall it works very well. These are very complex platforms with audio, video chat, um, audio recordings, interactive courses. So uh, it's never going to be absolutely perfect, just like Google sometimes has issues. These are complex platforms, but definitely lots there for everyone. Okay, so students, just uh, real quickly about the schedule. So right now, we are focusing on speaking part three. And then on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, we take a short break. It's kind of the quote-unquote weekend. Um, there's no class. That's usually the way it is. Although I will be releasing an HD speaking uh, video uh, during that time. And then uh, on um, Wednesday at the same time, I will be back with some new speaking part one questions in practice. Um, we're always improving and upgrading our platforms as well, students. So I see many of you are saying, yeah, it's, it's a 
good platform and it's complex, we're always updating the software, the servers, adding new videos, adding new exams, adding new blogs. So uh, always, always expanding. We've got quite a good team working on these websites. So keep that in mind. Okay, cool. So let's get cracking. Let's get into this part two here. Um, so we just did the part two class uh, 30 minutes ago. We finished and we are doing part three right now. Uh, but before we can do that, let's quickly review part two because part two is connected. Uh, it's intricately connected to part three. When you give your part two cue card response, the first one or two questions the examiner asks you these days is directly related to your response, okay? So this is my first tip for students who have not done the IELTS exam yet, okay? Uh, tip one here today is uh, keep in mind that the examiner will ask you a couple of questions at the end of your uh, part two, uh, two minute response. Okay, so be ready for this. All right, and I'll show you how you can practice that. So uh, we just did part two. Our part two cue card question was about teamwork that you did at school or at work in the past. So some kind of a team project that you did uh, in the past at your school or work. We chose to talk about a blood donation camp that we organized at our workplace with a couple of our colleagues. And this was our response. So let's go over this together and then we'll use this for the next couple questions. So this is speaking. Make sure to speak and repeat. Okay. So words, sentences, grammar, intonation, enunciation, as close as possible. Here we go, everyone. Three, two, one. A personally rewarding team project that I had the pleasure of managing was a blood donation camp at my previous workplace, Vipro Tech, back in the summer of 2018. I was the project manager with two other coworkers, the head of HR, Steve, and our marketing manager, Sarah. Each of us had a distinct role to play in the successful execution of this project. Our idea was to aid the local community by donating at least 100 units or bags of blood over the course of three days. I got approved for a $2,000 budget for this campaign to pay for advertising, food, beverages, and some gifts. I had the marketing manager put together the posters for the campaign, as well as the graphics for the email newsletter which Sarah sent out via the company's mailing list. We had a blood donation van set up in the parking lot that was staffed by a doctor and two nurses from our local hospital, Apollo General. The event was quite successful. It had been attended by over 80 of our employees and we had successfully donated well over 100 bags of blood. It was a very gratifying experience for those involved, and I felt that it had also helped to build team spirit within the company. If I were to do the event in the future, I wouldn't change that much, except perhaps the timeline. I felt there was an unnecessary amount of pressure because we only had around two weeks from start to finish. In the future, I would allocate at least three weeks to a similar, similar type of uh, team project. Okay, so now the examiner says that's the end of part two. For part three, I will ask you a couple questions to follow up on part two and some questions related to this topic. I will now take back the cue card, the note paper, the pencil, and we'll continue with part three. And immediately the examiner, because they're jotting down some questions, uh, we'll ask you a question like this. Um, what kinds of food and refreshments um, did you provide uh, for the people involved? Okay. 
So that might be the first question because you said that you were in charge of getting some food refreshments and some gifts. So right away, the examiner, they've already thought about the question while you're giving your two minute response. They're thinking about not only how you're speaking, what kind of grammar you're using, your fluency and all that other fun stuff, but they're also thinking about what questions to ask you. So they're going to ask you something like this. What kinds of food and refreshments did you provide for the people involved? Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this right away. You have to continue your fluency. You have to show that you know what you are talking about. And especially if you're making it up, if you're imagining, you have to be really quick and clever here. Okay. Okay. So Chid Vivine says we gave them oranges, which are rich in energy as well. Uh, they were exhausted after um, giving blood. Yeah, careful, Chidvi, with the will be exhausted. Okay, that's future tense. It's very confusing, all right? Now, focus, students. You're in a speaking class here. Uh, focus is very important in success in studies and on the IELTS exam. Un says, well, we offered some sandwiches and mineral water to the people um, they were all nutritious and gave them some uh, energy after donating the blood, which was quite exhausting. Okay, I'm good. Uh, Seni says, the ones that have a lot of nutrients inside, such as eggs, protein, noodles, carbohydrates. Okay, Seni, you can't just start listing it off. It's a blood donation uh, clinic, okay? So you have to um, be very clear, okay? Rodriguez says, we provided fruits, such as apples and bananas, to the donors. Uh, to give them quick energy and also juice and water to ensure they were hydrated. That's a really nice answer, Rajvir. So uh, we offered the uh, donors uh, fruits such as bananas, oranges, and apples to replenish their energy quickly uh, with fructose. As well as uh, some bottled water and apple and orange juice. to make sure that they got rehydrated, okay? All right, so this is where your vocabulary can shine. It seems like a simple question. What kinds of foods and refreshments did you give? But it doesn't, ma doesn't mean that your answer should be simple as well. You're showing your highest level of communication here. This is a short 12 to 15 minute interview where you have to show your highest level of English ability. Okay. All right. So here we go. Repeat after me. What kinds of food and refreshments did you provide for the people involved? We offered the donors fruits such as bananas, oranges, and apples to replenish their energy quickly with fructose, as well as some bottled water and apple and orange juice to make sure that they got rehydrated. Okay. Fructose is fruit sugar. Okay. Kamal says they will act as fuel. Good. Okay, you're using a simile there, Kamal. These, these acted as fuel. Watch your tense, students. This is past tense. So Kamal, you have a good idea to use a simile like these acted as fuel for the day. It's past tense. These acted as or would have acted as if you're talking about the future as seen from the past. Okay, so be very careful with your tenses, all right? Okay, um, and then uh, there's a good chance that the examiner will ask one more question. I'd like you to come up with this question. So based on this part two response uh, about uh, uh, organizing this um, blood donation camp, uh, it's again, the focus here is teamwork. What do you think is another um, question? that the examiner might ask you. 
okay? And you want to practice this. So this is good to practice with partners. When you're practicing speaking interviews with your tutors and with your partners, then uh, stop here to think about some questions, okay? So think about some questions that you might be asked. Okay, Amanjot, very good. So what kind of challenges occurred uh, during this project? Okay, good, 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 good. That's a good question. Okay. Marasa says, what's important for teamwork? Rohit, absolutely, of course. Yeah, multiple times. Rajvir says, what abilities uh, did you learn from this teamwork? So uh, what skills did you improve? Rajvir, what skills did you improve through this teamwork? Okay, very good. All right, Nick Haim says, did you have any problems? Yeah, that could be a very common one, right? So uh, what kinds of challenges did you face with your team during this project? Okay, great. Yeah, that would definitely be a likely question that the examiner might ask you. Uh, give me a nice uh, full sentence response for this one. So what kinds of challenges did you face with your team during this project? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay. All right. Let's see what you come up with again. Use the right grammar. Be expressive. Think answer, explanation, example. Okay? That's what you want to uh, keep in mind. Okay, Nadia, instead of thinking about a question, how, okay, so you're still thinking about the examiner's question. That might be the challenge, right? So we'll use that in a sentence. Okay? Okay, Amanjot says the first wave of donors were spontaneous and this led to a rush. Okay, Amanjot, it's a good idea. Make sure that you can express that clearly, okay? All right, Rashika says the main challenge was that uh, we had uh, the identity of the suitable donors, okay? So keeping uh, track of... Uh, the donors. Yep. Very good. Marasa says, well, as I mentioned in my cue card, I faced shortage of time during the project because I had to finish it in just two weeks. Yeah, that's really good, Marasa. So you're reflecting on what you said. That's exactly what you want to do. So, um, well, as I had mentioned, um, my partners and I felt quite rushed at times, um, we were snowed under with all of the official paperwork and logistics to make sure that the project would go off without a hitch. Aside from that, We needed to be extra careful to make sure that we had the correct information for each donor. Okay. Very good. Nicely done, Marasa. Yeah, don't forget what you said in part two and use that. Okay, absolutely. So uh, here I'm using a couple of uh, idioms. I'm teaching you these while I'm giving you this answer. First, repeat after me, and then I will explain this, okay? So what kinds of challenges did you face with your team during this project? The examiner is going to be very natural with their question, okay? In part three, the examiner does not change the way they speak just because you're not a native English speaker. Remember, IELTS is not an English as a second language exam. It's an English proficiency exam. Native speakers take the IELTS sometimes also. Okay, Every year there's about, I think the statistics at IELTS is something like 30,000 native speakers 
take the IELTS exam each year for teaching jobs and also for university if they don't have high school grade 12 English. So it's a proficiency exam. So here they're just asking you with natural English and this is one of the most natural ways to ask this question. What kinds of challenges did you face with your team during this project? And then your response, well, as I had mentioned, my partners and I felt quite rushed at times. We were snowed under with all of the official paperwork and logistics to make sure that the project would go off without a hitch. Aside from that, we needed to be extra careful to make sure that we had the correct information for each donor. Okay, good. Uh, snowed under means that you have uh, too much work to do, basically. You're too busy. You're snowed under. It means you're covered in a bunch of snow, uh, which is basically all of your work. And go off without a hitch means to execute with no mistakes. Okay, so to complete without any mistakes, to go off without a hitch. All right, if you're not familiar with these idioms, write them down. In the speaking, only use idioms that you can use accurately 100%. Do not try to use any fancy idioms that you're not sure of, otherwise that will hurt your score bad or badly, okay? So, and don't use very complicated idioms either. Be careful about that. Okay, so after asking you a couple of questions, sorry, before I go on, is that clear? Is, is, are those idioms, those questions and answers, is that clear? Does everybody clearly understand what I'm talking about here? Can you give me a couple of thumbs up or yeses if, if that's all clear? I want to make sure that I do not lose you. Uh, I'm, of course, paying attention to make sure that many, many candidates and viewers of different levels all are getting some value out of this, okay? All right. An says, yes, Patel's got me. Thank you. Manir, Carolina, great. There you are, Carolina. Good. Uh, Drunken Master is on point. Very good. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So you're with me. You're paying attention. Lovely. All right. So after these questions reflecting on part two, now the examiner knows that you didn't just memorize some answer. They know that, okay, you know what you're doing. Uh, and uh, now they will go on and say, all right, uh, let's talk about teamwork. Okay, so of course it's usually the topic that they continue asking questions for. Okay, so Karen, Amanjat, Luchika, Nadia, very good. I like the uh, flexes there, Andre Lushkov. All right. So uh, then they'll go, okay, let's talk about teamwork. And then they'll ask you some questions about teamwork. And these will be much more specific and more challenging uh, than uh, part one questions especially if you're showing a good level of English. If the examiner feels like you're at least a band seven or eight, uh, they're definitely going to ask you some questions that will challenge you to see if you are maybe a band nine. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, here we go. Let's talk about teamwork. Why is it important for children to learn about teamwork from a young age? And some IELTS questions are really surprising. Like what? <laughs> Suddenly you're asking me about children and learning from a young age what okay well sure let me think about it if you need a minute ask for some time that's a great question give me a minute to think okay uh, Ferdov says it's crucial for kids to learn about teamwork from an early age as it assists them to build communication skills and work under pressure and to be tolerant which are vital to be successful in society right Ferdovs? that's what I'm guessing you're going to finish with. It's great. Marasa says it's necessary for kids to learn the importance of teamwork early because not only does this help children to learn their responsibilities, their social responsibilities at an early age, but also enhances their patience with others. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Carolina says developing teamwork from a young age allows children to carry these skills throughout their life because teamwork is a social activity which is crucial to become successful uh, like I just mentioned for uh, this blood donation camp, right, Carolina? If we want to tie back to part two, it's good. OK, 
Okay. As I'm reading and correcting everyone, make sure to repeat these. Okay. A lot of these answers are very high band. Some of our students uh, are very, very good in English. They've been with me for quite some time and they have good, strong English to begin with. Kevin Bowie is one of those students. And here goes Kevin Bowie. So uh, Kevin Bowie says acquiring uh, teamwork skills from childhood is paramount because this will prepare children mentally to collaborate with others as they grow up, which is a must in modern society. Also, early knowledge of working with others will come in handy uh, for the young to remain on friendly terms with their social circles. Kevin Bowie, as often you are definitely on a band nine path, which is great. Very good use of vocabulary, directly responding to the question. And importantly, the answer is a very easily understood and agreed upon answer. Nick Hill says it is essential for children to get knowledge about teamwork since it will be helpful for them both in their job and also to tackle problems uh, and communicating with others. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Roshni says it's imperative to learn uh, teamwork for youngsters and how to work in groups from an early age because they can use these skills in future projects to t tackle major problems smoothly as well as saving time. Very nice. Okay. Well done. Okay. So I'll give an answer. And then uh, if yours sounds something like the ones that I've read or my answer, then you're definitely on the right path. So it's <clears throat> crucial. for youngsters to acquire uh, the skills of working in groups from a young age, as young as uh, two or three, because humans are fundamentally social creatures. Learning to collaborate with their peers, young children will grow up to be successful both professionally and in their personal circles. I can reflect on this from my own childhood and this has led me to a career in project management because that's what I said in part two right okay all right so there's my answer using uh, some Good grammar with future, okay? Some good paraphrasing, answering, explaining, giving examples. Here we go, students, so repeat after me. Let's talk about teamwork. Why is it important for children to learn about teamwork from a young age? It's crucial for youngsters to acquire the skills of working in groups from a young age, as young as two or three, because humans are fundamentally social creatures learning to collaborate with their peers. Young children will grow up to be successful both professionally and in their personal circles. I can reflect on this from my own childhood, and this has led me to a career uh, in project management. Right? That's what I said. I was working as project manager for this uh, tech company. Okay. All right. So oftentimes, the examiners in part three will be in this kind of um, conversation, communication uh, setting with you where they will ask you some follow-up questions and the questions will relate to the previous questions. This is where they're going into more detail and they're looking to explore how well you can express yourself. So here's the next question. Uh, what can teachers and schools do to encourage uh, learning teamwork? Hmm. Okay, that's a very good question. It's a very common topic for North American schools in Canada 
and the U.S. Uh, please do answer, everyone. I will try to catch different people uh, at different times with their answers and make corrections in real time. Okay. So Pachu says it is important for children to learn about teamwork from a young age because it helps them to socialize and develop leadership roles in future life. Okay, Pachu, that's for the previous. It's a good answer. Let's get some answers for this one. Okay. Uchika Mutha says teachers in schools play a crucial role in inculcating social values in children. Uh, I would use the word instilling. Okay, so let's try that one more time. Teachers in schools play a crucial role in instilling social values in children. It shapes them to be excellent global citizens and teaches them how important teamwork is and how it works wonders. Uh, Lichika, you're off topic. What can teachers in schools do to encourage? So this means like what kind of activities or what kind of lessons, curriculum, advice can schools and teachers implement for this goal? Okay, so make sure you pay careful attention to the question. Okay. All right, Alex Joseph says, will many teachers engage children in team sports or games in order to enhance teamwork? and leadership qualities from a young age. Secondly, they make them discuss lessons among groups to find out answers. Okay, Alex, good. Uh, now, Alex, careful again. So same idea here. You're talking about what teachers and schools are doing, okay? Uh, here is what can they do. You can say the same idea, but express it as what teachers and schools can do. So instead, Alex, you can say, well, teachers can engage children uh, to participate in team sports such as football and basketball in order to motivate them to become better team players. Right, Alex? So use what you said, but say what they can do and you'll give a much better answer. Band 7, band 8, band 9 answers are much more about content than just English. Okay, keep that in mind. All right. Very, very important. Okay. KMR says, in my perspective, the most beneficial way to encourage students uh, is adding uh, group project classes, which will teach students how to uh, cooperate together. KMR, careful with your spelling. I had to do a few fixes there and don't be really wordy. Okay, so careful with your word order and unnecessary wording. You're on the right track. Give an explanation and an example as well, KMR. Uh, what you did well is you used the word encourage to make sure that you're answering uh, on par. So what I do uh, when I hear a question like this from the examiner is, of course, I pay attention to the topic of teachers in schools, but I also pay attention to the mode of the question. So can is very important here. It's kind of an awkward way to do it. Uh, can is very important here. And encourage is very important here. So um, can, you can keep it the same or you can maybe come up with a synonym like able, for example. Okay. Uh, encourage, it, it, you can come up with a synonym, motivate. Okay. And then right away, by using these in your response, you're going to stay much more on topic. Okay. Everyday communication in real life, in our own language or in English or foreign language, we often miscommunicate. Okay. So improving communication should be a goal for every clever person in their day-to-day -day life, not just for the IELTS exam. And so we're always giving tips on how to do that, okay? Uh, we believe that IELTS is much more than just an English test. It's also a test of communication and quick thinking, critical thinking. So you want to use that. You want to uh, work with that in mind, okay? So educators, okay? Always push your paraphrasing. Teachers, educators, educators, and learning institutions can motivate their pupils. 
So here I'm doing like 100% paraphrasing just to show you how much you really can do this if you push yourself, okay? So instead of uh, students, okay? So educators and learning institutions can motivate their pupils to acquire uh, team player skills through many group activities and sports, such as working together on science projects, building a model volcano, and actively participating in uh, basketball, football, and volleyball to name a few by enabling them to enjoy these activities students will pick up many of the social skills needed to get along in team uh, type settings. Okay. All right, so again, answer, explain, example. Visualize throughout, paraphrase. And use the question, okay? Use the question. So able, enable, can, encourage, motivate. Your answer should reflect these concepts. If you can't paraphrase, if you can't come up with the idea of motivate or you can't come up with the uh, concept of enable, that's fine. Then just use the words can and use the words encourage, okay? It's still better than not using those words. So having a little bit of a repetition of vocabulary in your answers is not bad. It's worse to be off topic, okay? All right, here we go, students. So repeat after me. What can teachers in school do to encourage learning teamwork? Educators and learning institutions can motivate their pupils to acquire team player skills, any group activities and sports, such as working together on science projects, building a model volcano, and actively participating in basketball, football, volleyball, to name a few. By enabling them to enjoy these activities, students will pick up many of the social skills needed to get along in team settings. Okay. Let's keep going here. All right. Next question. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this. How has technology been helping people to work more effectively in teams? Okay, so how has technology been helping people to work more effectively in teams? Think about answer, explanation, and example. All right. There's so lots of answers coming up coming out right off the bat. That's great. I'm always looking for new students as well. So Un for Dobbs, Kevin, those are some great answers. Keep going. Okay. And I'm really encouraging others to try as well. Okay. So Mandy Chen says, with the advancement of technology, students and individuals increase their effectiveness in teamwork, like using social media communication devices, including Skype and WhatsApp to be uh, more easily in touch with each other. Okay, Mandy, good, uh, good ideas. Careful with the way you express it. Quite close though, okay, that was good. All right. For Dobbs says, advancements in technology give individuals more opportunities to be involved with others like Zoom and Telegram, uh, joining people together from all over the globe in order to uh, solve tasks and be part of the team regardless of time and location. Yes, for Dobbs, give me an example for Dobbs. Don't forget that example, okay? So you can reflect on your part two. You can say, in fact, part of 
our uh, blood donation camp project. Uh, because we were so busy, we managed on the weekend uh, through Skype video chat conversations, right? For Dobbs, you can throw that in. Okay. All right. Senny says, tech, the tech will assist people to work correctly um, and require the minimum time to finish all tasks by reducing the repetition of tasks. Um, good idea, Senny. Uh, I'm a little bit curious of what you mean exactly. So this is, exa this is where you want some explanation and example, Senny, to have clear communication. Okay. All right. Okay, um, so uh, what I don't see so far, uh, Amanjat, you have this, I see that, uh, but with uh, many of the other students, I don't see you reflecting the grammar of the question. So this question is how has technology helping? Okay, what's the grammar here, students? What's the grammar? Okay, what's the grammar here? I'll read a couple more comments, but I'd like you to tell me what grammar is being used here. And now I see Rajvir using the correct grammar. Okay. Un says, I used it. <laughs> okay, I'm good. It's not only, yeah, so Hind, it's the perfect tense, but what kind of perfect tense is it? It's not simple perfect. It's present perfect something. It's more than just present perfect. It's present perfect progressive, right? Very good, Carolina. Carolina's the first one to answer that. And then Uriza after, yeah. It's has been helping. It's present perfect continuous. So ideally, your uh, answer is also containing present perfect continuous. Ideally, your answer also contains present perfect continuous. Or you can say progressive, it's the same, okay? So continuous, progressive, whichever one you want, um, but uh, it's definitely with an ing, all right? So you want to show that in your answer as well, okay? And I saw a couple people doing that afterwards. They realized it and then they used it, okay? Uh, Rajveer says tech uh, has been aiding individuals immensely to carry out effective teamwork. These days, individuals uh, have been using Zoom and Google to meet and organize group activities in different geographies. Very good, Rajveer. Uh, use the present perfect continuous a couple times even, okay? So uh, tech has been uh, aiding people immensely. in being more effective uh, in their teamwork. Whether organizing, yeah, or executing the project software such as Google Calendar and Zoom have been playing a key role for assisting collaborators across time and space to successfully complete uh, projects. In fact, I used both of these in our uh, blood donation camp with my two colleagues. Okay. All right. So here we go uh, from the top. Okay. Present perfect continuous in the question, present perfect continuous in the answer. If you can do it twice, 
If you show it twice, the examiner will definitely catch it at least once. Examiners are pretty good. They'll catch it even if you use it just once. But if you use it twice, you're basically showing the examiner that, hey, I prepared for this exam. I know what I'm doing. I'm a good communicator and I can effectively implement the grammar of questions even when it's complex grammar like present perfect continuous. So here we go. How has technology been helping people to work more effectively in teams? Tech has been aiding people immensely in being more effective in their teamwork, whether organizing or executing the project. Software such as Google Calendar and Zoom have been playing a key role to assist collaborators across time and space to successfully complete work. In fact, I used both of these in our blood donation camp with my two colleagues. Okay. All right. Next question. Is this always more efficient? Why or why not? So sometimes those follow-up questions from the examiner are really direct. Okay, so be ready for that. So is this always more efficient? Why or why not? Okay. Karen Veer, nice answer for the previous question. Ferdov says, it's not always more beneficial because sometimes the speed of the internet connection is not perfect and most people opt for verbal communication. Okay. Amanjot says, I think, I think no, because it can be possible that the material that the students want may not be available uh, or on the part of the student that he or she is not able to understand the material, material available. This leads to, okay, Amanjot, it's a good start, but you definitely need to finish the idea to be clear. Alex says, well, as I mentioned earlier, we had to do several discussions for the blood donation camp. The technology like Zoom app has been helping us in the meetings in this social distancing season immensely. Jaoba says, in my opinion, teamwork is not always the best option human individuals create to and is essential to think alone. Uh, Jaoba, you're off topic. The question here is, is using technology always more beneficial for teamwork than not using technology, okay? Uh, Kevin Bowie says, not in all instances. One situation could be in times of technical failure, like losing the internet connection, which can actually hinder the communication instead of facilitating it. Another circumstance could be potential distraction from tech devices, like using phones during team meetings. Yeah, absolutely. So technology can be distracting. Okay. All right. Roshni says, no, it's not always true. Uh, since technological results may vary like meteorology, uh, it's always not, not always true because weather changes from time to time. Yeah, that would be off topic, Roshni. Definitely. Uh, Chetna engineer says, yes, it is very useful, like this situation in the pandemic, students have to study from home so that they can communicate and prepare projects without any barriers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Usman says, teamwork is not always better because the mental level of each one is different and so there are needs for the management of a team. Sometimes individuals are capable enough. Uh, again, that's off topic. So careful students uh, that you connect the follow-up questions correctly. How has technology been helping people to work more effectively in teams? Okay, effective in teams. Is this always more efficient using technology? Why or why not? Okay, Din says, I think it is more efficient for those who have good internet connectivity, but when people are running out of time, sometimes communicating uh, may be distracted by noise and it can slow down at work. Mm -hmm. um, okay, think about it this way. So always think outside the box, students. Um, just so here, if I want to answer this quickly, okay, so let's say I need a bit of time. So I can say that's a tricky question. 
uh, to answer. Please allow me a moment to think. Okay, so you can use a sentence like this. Now, if you're using this sentence to think about vocabulary or grammar, the examiner will know, and you're going to lose marks for fluency. But if you uh, use this kind of a sentence and then stop for three to five seconds to actually think about your answer, then uh, the examiner will also know that and you can get a better score by giving a good and accurate answer. Okay. So if I use a sentence like this, and you should only use this when you're thinking of your answer, not your English, okay? otherwise your fluency uh, will be uh, decreased, okay? your score for that will be decreased, then really just think about the answer. And to do that, uh, visualize. Okay? So Okay, so visualize a situation where you're using technology and you're not using technology in a group of people. And then right away, you will have more clarity, okay? And you'll realize that technology is useful a lot of the time, but not all the time, because there are a couple of interesting um, barriers that are created by technology. What is one of those? So what is one... Um, barrier that is buffered by technology when you're working in a group of people. So, I mean, companies still prefer for certain groups and projects to go into the company and work in the room together. And there's a good reason for that. Why? So if you visualize yourself working uh, in a group project, maybe designing a new building, and you're doing that online through Zoom, or in an office sitting there with two or three people, what's the difference? What is one immediate difference that comes to mind? Okay. Think about maybe a team of lawyers. That might be a good one. So a team of lawyers working on a case. Okay. So don't just think of technical glitch. That's surface, Nikhil. So technical glitch, sure. Bad internet connection, sure. Think about flow of ideas. Think about this in a little bit more detail. And you'll see that this is very true. I mean, think about it this way. Why do you still prefer to um, meet your friends for their birthday in person than meeting them uh, through Zoom? There we go. Chetna says emotions. How about emotions? Yeah, let's not forget about emotions, everyone. Humans are emotional. Yeah, and because of the emotional exchange, Amanjat, that leads to a greater exchange of ideas. I agree, Marasa. Why is there a more rapid exchange of ideas? Because we can emotionally sense each other better, okay? Can you imagine how you would sense me if you're actually in this room with me, right? Okay, so uh, that's a tricky question to answer. Please allow me a moment to think. I do believe that in many cases, uh, technology has indeed improved the efficiency of teamwork. However, there are certain instances where emotions may play a crucial or a vital, so we don't repeat ourselves, role in the group work process, such as lawyers working on a case together, or a group of therapists helping a patient where it would be much more efficient to be present in person. Okay? All right. So, again, visualize. And if you need a minute, minute to think, then ask for that minute. Okay? All right? So, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. 
Is this always more efficient? Why or why not? I do believe that in many cases, technology has indeed improved the efficiency of teamwork. However, there are certain instances where emotions may play a vital role in the group work process, such as lawyers working on a case together or a group of therapists helping a patient where it would be much more efficient to be present in person. Okay. All right. Um, so if you're doing a great job, you're being very fluent and it's only taking you a couple of minutes to get through these questions, the examiner may introduce a secondary part three topic. Okay, so here we go. Let's talk about leadership. And then you have some more questions. What are important characteristics for leaders to be successful managing a team? Can you give some examples of this? If there is lack of leadership in a group, what may be the consequences? How can this be overcome? What are some of the common difficulties that leaders often need to cope with? Can you elaborate? I will leave these questions for you to practice on your own or with others on the website. Remember what I showed you at the beginning of the class on our websites, aehelp.com and glshelp.com. You can partner up with other students and practice your English with them for free. Okay. You don't have to buy the course to do that. You can just sign up for the demo course and you can use it there for free. If you'd like all of our videos in HD with no ads, good quality, streaming to your phone, your computer, as well as our apps, interactive uh, course exams, uh, original practice exams, you can use the best coupon or discount code of the year for Cyber Monday that ends this weekend. Tomorrow, Cyber Day, will give you 40% off. Uh, just click the big red buttons that you'll see on the pages at aehelp.com, glshelp.com. That's it for today and for this week of live classes. Wow, we had five days of live streaming this week with that extra day. So good job for those of you that were in classes all day. Vaishak, P.S., Fantastic. I love seeing a positive message ending a class. You got 7.5 overall. That's a great score. Good job. Send me an email. Let, uh, give me a testimonial. I'd love to have it. You're very welcome, Rashika, Rajveer, Carolina. Have a fantastic rest of your weekends, everyone. For Dovs, Raghav, much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Bye and see you next week.